Hello, everybody. This is Skip Elsheimer. Welcome to the AV Geeks Lunchtime Streaming Show. Um, we watch old 16 millimeter films, and uh, it's very early here on Thursday because I'm getting ready to go to the Orphans Film Symposium at the uh, Museum of the Moving Image and meet my peers and watch some presentations about obscure rare um endangered films and video and um yeah just hang out uh so today we are watching uh films about duties of secretaries and we're going to start off with a film actually called duties of a secretary then we're going to watch Sec the secretary's day then uh what gave me the reason and the idea to do this was I had transferred a bunch of um, commercials for IBM and their technologies in the 60s. Um, and some of them are typewriters, some of them are dictaphones, and other types of devices. So I figured it would be a great time to watch these. Oh, here comes the garbage truck. Uh, anyways, thanks for tuning in today. If you like what you saw, hit the thumbs up. Um, you can also go to ko-fi.com slash avgeeks, patreon.com slash avgeeks, or donate via super thanks. I can hear it. It's coming closer to the garbage truck. Anyways, um, we'll see you tomorrow, Friday. I mean, see you tomorrow. But uh, I hope everybody has a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. And to turn it on, just turn this switch. Here are the supplies. Letterheads, envelopes, carbon paper, ribbons. What store do I call for replacement? Fairson's. And always be sure to let... Here are the files. Simple enough. Everything's alphabetical under the main headings. Factories, farms, homes, and so forth. Clients' names alphabetically. All incoming mail and one copy of everything that goes out. Legal papers go in here. Sometimes cash, too. So always be sure that this is locked whenever there's no one in the office. Well, how do you lock it? Remember I showed you how to open it? Well, to lock it, you do this, then twirl the dial. Then try the handle to make sure that it's locked. You're lucky to get a good job like this, just out of school. I know. I only hope I can hold it. With your school record, you'll do fine. Just watch your P's and Q's. Oh, and don't forget, there are lots of secrets in the real estate business. Be careful never to say a word about Mr. Harmon's business or his plans. Never. To anybody. Don't worry. I'll remember. Has Miss Child shown you the ropes, Miss Hayes? Yes, Mr. Harmon. She's given me a good briefing. Fine. Well, Miss Childs, I'm sorry to see you go. You've certainly been a great help to me. Thank you, Mr. Harmon. I've really enjoyed working for you. Goodbye, and the very best of luck. I hope you like California. Thank you. Nine o'clock tomorrow, Miss Hayes? Nine o'clock, Mr. Harmon. Good night to you both. Good night. Good night. I can see where I'm going to have a tough time filling your shoes. Don't worry about it. He won't expect too much at first. Later on, you'll be depending on your own judgment. Making appointments, editing letters, even writing them yourself. Gee, oh, it's not really so tough. Just keep your head and use your common sense. Here are the keys, the front door, the desk, and the files. Thank you. I think that's about all. Good luck. Thanks so much, and good luck to you. Bye. Goodbye.
Agatha, 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 in the first week at school. It's important to remember never to interrupt dictation, since the dictator will lose his train of thought. Always wait until he finishes the letter. Then go back over it with him and check any doubtful. Open and sort the mail. Never interrupt the station. Don't forget enclosure. Write down messages. Write them down. Never interrupt. J.B. Grant. Mr. J.B. Grant, Apex Corporation, 103 West 7th Street, City. Dear Mr. Grant, thank you for your letter of the 8th. We have several properties of the type in which you're interested. Excuse me, Mr. Harmon. Yes? Did you say type or types? Type, no S. Now then, where was I? Oh, yes. One of them, a house on Worcester Road. How do you spell Worcester, Mr. Harmon? W-O-R-C-E-S-T-E-R, -E -E Worcester. Formerly belonging to the late Albert Robertson. Robinson or Robertson? Bertson, Miss Hayes. Now then, where was I? Uh, belonging to the late Albert Robertson. Oh, yes. Comes quite close to meeting your specifications. You what? Never interrupt dictation, since the dictator will lose his train of thought. Another Always wait until he has finished the letter. Is that L-A-U-R-E-L? -E yes. Where was I? Uh, at the corner of Valley Road and Laura Lane. Oh, yes. He's unusually handsome, as you will see from the enclosed photograph. Enclose this with the letter. Yes, sir. I should be delighted to show the houses at your convenience. Looking forward to an opportunity to be of service. I remain very sincerely yours and so forth. Got that? Yes, sir. Do you want a new paragraph after convenience? Did I say paragraph? No, sir. Then no paragraph. That's all, Miss Hayes. Yes, sir. And closure. One of the most common types of carelessness is forgetting enclosures. I, I guess I forgot this.
don't correct dictation unless you're specifically told to. There should be a new paragraph. It's wrong. I'll just fix it anyway. Is there anything to go out? Yes, this, this letter, if you wait just a second. Thank you, miss. Bye. Bye-bye. Don't be careless. Carelessness is the one unforgivable sin. I am very sorry, Mr. Harmon. Unforgivable sin. The one unforgivable sin. Mr. Harmon's office. Mr. George Harmon, please. New York is calling. Well, I'm sorry, but Mr. Harmon's not in just now. May I take a message? Please ask him to call New York operator 53 as soon as he comes in. Operator, please leave word that it's very important. Operator 53, New York, as soon as he comes in. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Harmon? The file on the Johnson farm? I, I can't seem to find it anywhere. I've been through all the, the J's and the I's and the K's and I just can't find it. I don't know where it could be. Oh, under farm. Oh, how stupid of me. Simple enough. Everything's alphabetical under the main heading. Factory, farm, home, and so forth. Is Mr. Harmon... Mr. Harmon, is he here? No, Mr. Harmon's not in the office. Was there something? Will he be back soon? Tax? is the first requisite of business etiquette. Always be tactful. Mr. Harmon's a very busy man. What was it you wanted to see him about? I wanted to sell... sell my... Some shoelaces, perhaps? Some pencils? 
Oh, no, not shoelaces. Sell my... Oh, Miss Hayes, would you bring me the pet? But you said he wasn't here. I'd better go somewhere else. Did you tell that lady I was out? Yes, of course. She was hardly the sort of person you would want to see. Hardly the sort. It might interest you to know that was Miss Courtney. Miss Abigail Courtney. She may look slightly eccentric. She can afford to. She has $30 million. For 10 years, I've been trying to persuade her to sell her old mansion. Did she say anything about it? Well, she did say something about selling something, but I assumed that... You assumed? There goes 10 years careful campaigning. Nice work, young lady. But I didn't know. Didn't know. Never take chances. Anybody could be a client. Always be tactful. You never know. Never take chances. Never take chances. Anybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I think Mr. Harmon is expecting me, Mr. O'Brien. Oh, I'm sorry, but Mr. Harmon is out. I have no record of an appointment, Mr. O'Brien. Why, I made the date a week ago. Wednesday the 23rd at 4.30. Wednesday? Well, maybe you can at least tell me where he is. Uh, why, yes, he, he's seeing Major Patterson of the Argyle Company. Argyle, eh? They're getting ready to close a big deal, Mr. Harmon said. A big deal? The old Goodman Brothers factory. Mm-hmm. Very, very interesting. Many thanks, young lady. You've done me a big favor. Goodbye. There are lots of secrets in business. Never say a word about Mr. Harmon's business or about his plans. Never. To anybody. But I didn't mean anything. Oh, and I probably ruined another big deal. Hello, Mr. Harmon's office. This is Mr. Harmon. Are there any messages? Nothing since you left, Mr. Harmon. Well, I'm staying in the country for dinner. I'll be in in the morning. Oh, uh, don't forget to lock up when you leave. All right, Mr. Harmon. Good night. No good to write it down and then forget it. Harmon, prominent realtor, was robbed last night of $20,000 in cash and many valuable papers. Mr. Harmon declares the loss is the fault of Barbara Hayes, his secretary, who is now in police custody pending arraignment. Extra, extra, Barbara Hayes accused of criminal negligence. Extra, Barbara Hayes sued for $50,000 damages. Extra, extra, Barbara Hayes sued for $50,000 damages.
in a dream. He'd have fired me 50 times. Good morning, Mr. Harmon's office. Is he there? Oh, I'm sorry, but Mr. Harmon's not here at the moment. This is his secretary. May I help you? This is John Wharton. When can I see him today? Mm, according to his calendar, he's free at 3 o'clock, Mr. Wharton. Okay, tell him I'll be in at 3. Oh, where can I reach you in case he's made another appointment? Main, 4675. Thank you. I'll call you within an hour in case there's any change. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Good morning, Miss Hayes. Good morning, Mr. Harmon. Any mail? Mr. John Horton called and asked for an appointment at 3 o'clock. Anything on my calendar for them? No, there isn't. All right. And you have a luncheon date with Mr. Anderson at the Cosmos Club at 12.30 and a Chamber of Commerce meeting at 2. Right. Uh, will you come in, please, and bring your book?
letter to Mr. James P. McDonald. McDonald Realty Corporation. McDonald? McDonald. Wonder how you spell it. Better not interrupt now. Ask him after he's through. Jim. Confirming our telephone conversation of yesterday, I'm delighted to inform you that our listings show a number of residential properties of the kind you have in mind. I am enclosing two copies of our current listings. With warmest personal regards, very sincerely yours, and so forth. That's all for now, Miss Hayes. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Harmon. Yes? Is Mr. McDonald's name M.C. or M.A.C.? Oh, I'm sorry. It's M.C. I'm glad you asked, Miss Hayes. Please always ask me when you're not sure about something. Guessing is just a waste of time. And I don't really bite little girls' heads off when they ask questions. Oh, I know you don't. Thanks. Yes, but he's busy just now. Had you an appointment? No, but I want to talk to him. If you'll give me your name, I'll find out if he can see you. Germer, Joe Germer. May I ask what you want to see him about, Mr. Germer? Building I want to buy. Oh, well, if you sit down, please. Excuse me, Mr. Harmon. This is Mr. Germer outside. He has no appointment, but he'd like to see you. Oh, the big contractor. Well, show him in by all means, Miss Hayes. Mr. Germer, will you come in, please? Mr. Harmon, this is Mr. Germer. Hello, Mr. Germer. Won't you sit down? Thanks. Miss Hayes, uh, Mr. Germer and I are going out to look over some property. I'll sign that McDonald letter when I get back. How long will you be, Mr. Harmon? Mm, about two hours. Oh, uh, did I give you the enclosures? Well, yes, I, I have them right here. Okay. See you later. Bye. These are the Johnson Farm papers, Miss Hayes. File them, please. Yes, Mr. Harmon. Jameson, Johnson. Here we are. Easy enough when you know how. That's all for today, Miss Hayes. Oh, uh, don't forget to lock up when you leave? No, sir. I... I hope everything was all right. Indeed it was. Just keep it up, and I'm sure our association will be a long and pleasant. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to see you. Everything was fine. Good night, Miss Hayes. Good night, Mr. Harmon.
The modern world is a world in which business plays an important part. Office buildings and office workers are a familiar sight in every city and town. So is the office secretary, that alert, efficient person who plays such a vital role in the world of business. This is Jean Carroll. Her day begins at 9 o'clock, and she's at her desk on time. Promptness, neatness, orderliness. In her first minute, Jean has displayed these attributes of a good secretary. Office supplies are the tools with which Jean works. The orderly arrangement of her desk permits a quick check to see that she has enough supplies on hand for the day. She takes out only those things she knows she needs. With her place of business in order, she helps to organize the day for herself and her employer by referring to her invaluable calendar pad and from it typing up the daily appointment sheet. This record indicates the names of various people who have appointments for the day. It also lists memorandums or personal reminders for her employer. The record is placed on Mr. Williams' desk before he arrives. The new arrival is Marge Quinn, office stenographer and Jean's co-worker. Now, Let's clear up this distinction between a stenographer and a secretary. A stenographer takes dictation, transcribes and types. She may also do billing and filing and operate office machines such as a duplicator or calculator or transcribing machine. At times she may also operate the switchboard. A secretary assumes much more responsibility than a stenographer and performs many duties that contribute to the success of the company, as we shall see. The calendar pad helps Jean to keep track of her many responsibilities and to establish a regular schedule. At about the same time each day, the morning mail is distributed. Sorting it is one of Jean's responsibilities. She selects the unopened personal letters for Mr. Williams from the business mail, which was opened in the mail room. Mr. Williams has instructed her to open all his personal mail. The care and precision with which she handles this routine assignment are again indicative of Jean's thoroughly competent approach to her job. This takes a little longer than simply zipping the letters open, but it minimizes the dangers of tearing the contents or accidentally throwing away a loose enclosure. And of course, enclosures are no longer loose after they've passed through Jean's hands. In checking through the business mail, she finds a letter which refers to some previous correspondence. So she gets out the file on this, in case Mr. Williams might want it later. And now the mail is in order. Good morning, Marge. Good morning, Mr. Williams. Good morning, Jean. Good morning, Mr. Williams. I want to talk to Mr. Dubois of Philadelphia. Will you call him for me at uh, 11 o'clock? Why, yes, of course. That's Peter Dubois, isn't it? That's right. And it's very important. Jean makes a note of Mr. Williams' instructions on her calendar pad. The good secretary doesn't rely on memory. Jean will make sure that every item here is taken care of today. Two of them, the itinerary and the checks, can easily be attended to during the morning dictation period. Mr. Williams usually gives dictation at the same time each morning. This period is an important part of Jean's daily routine. She makes sure she has all her materials for taking dictation plus the itinerary, the checks, and the file folder she got out earlier. Leaving Marge to answer the phone and receive any callers, Jean responds quickly. She recognizes her responsibility to conserve her employer's time. It's another essential part of her job. For all her other duties, taking dictation and transcribing her notes is Jean's most important responsibility, the foundation of secretarial skill. During the dictation period, Mr. Williams often takes up other questions of the day, makes suggestions, and gives impromptu instructions. 
The secretary, too, uses this period to clarify any matters that need attention, so that she need not bother him later. Foresight, such as bringing the file which she thought he would need. Dependability in attending to many personal and business details, such as making sure he signs checks. These are qualities which make the secretary a real asset to her employer. There you are. Now about this itinerary for my trip to Toronto. I've decided to stop off at Cleveland on my way back. That will be on the 28th. Can you rearrange this to allow me a day there? Very well. I'll check on hotel and train reservations. I think that will be all for now, Jean. Oh, uh, by the way, I saw Mr. Carl. He won't be in this afternoon. Uh, make his appointment for uh, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Jean leaves the office without delay. Now she can revise her schedule and bring it up to date. On the calendar pad, she checks off the items that have been taken care of. The appointment with Mr. Carl is canceled. It becomes the first item on the next day's schedule. For organizing her work is a continuing process from day to day and week to week. The checks have been signed and the itinerary must be revised. The itinerary is a schedule of times and places that make up a trip. A hotel guide will supply the information Jean needs to arrange for Mr. Williams to stay overnight in Cleveland. Knowing where to look for information and how to use it is part of Jean's job. The secretary should be familiar with standard reference books like these. By mid-morning, Jean is well along with her transcribing. This period is another part of her very day. But she is also receptionist to customers, friends, job applicants, and salesmen. Jean knows how her employer wants her to handle these different kinds of callers. In every case, she is tactful, courteous, and poised. Since she cannot admit this salesman now, she makes an appointment for him for the next morning. The secretary's manner of handling callers directly influences their attitude toward the business. The unexpected caller receives as courteous treatment as does Mr. Richards, who has an appointment. Callers, whether expected or not, usually interrupt other work, but Jean loses no time getting back to her organized routine. Call Peter Dubois. Yes, proper use of the telephone is another must for a good secretary. Long distance, please. I want Philadelphia, Quaker 1200, Mr. Peter Dubois. The last name is spelled D-U-B-O-I-S. Mr. Arthur J. Williams at Center 9000 is calling. Not only does the secretary maintain a pleasant relationship with her employer and his business associates, but she must be able to get along with her co-workers and occasionally give instructions to subordinates and supervise their work. Jean is able to tell others what to do because she knows from experience what is required. Having been a general office worker before she became a secretary, she's familiar with other phases of office work, and she's always willing to help a fellow worker. Consideration for others is an important factor in good office manners. Jean has carried through her daily routine very thoroughly and has kept up with her schedule. As a result, even a late interruption, like an unexpected call for dictation, can be handled smoothly. In this office, there's no frantic last-minute rush to wind up the day's work. Jean is still at top efficiency. Even under pressure of getting out a last-minute letter, she is calm and courteous. Goodwill and understanding are part of her personality, part of her job. Now, with the rush letter transcribed and signed, she winds up her day in a neat, orderly manner. The routine of one day carries over into the next. Before Jean leaves, 
she has a clear picture of what she is going to do tomorrow. Alert, personable, efficient. Our secretary leaves at the end of the day with a sense of accomplishment and of pride in her contribution to the world of business in which she plays such an important part. Here's a better way to put words on paper. A remarkable electric typewriter, the IBM Selectric. This is what makes it different. An ingenious printing element that works faster than the eye can see. Watch it in action. Now in slow motion, as it turns, tilts, prints. The IBM Selectric is versatile, too. From many different snap-on, snap-off elements, you can select the best type style for the job and be ready to type again in seconds. The IBM Selectric, a typewriter so different, only the alphabet remains the same. This man used to spend hours writing medical findings in longhand. But the new IBM 224 dictating unit cured him of writer's cramp. This man used to trust countless details to memory. But the new IBM 224 never forgets anything. This woman used to take notes while checking her merchandise. But the new IBM 224 takes stock of things quickly and easily. At only 28 ounces, this new IBM dictating unit is so small and so compact that you can use it anywhere you think. At home, on trips and conferences, and of course behind your desk. Whatever you do, the new IBM 224 can help you do it better. May I see a license, please? This man used to be handcuffed by paperwork, but the new IBM 224 dictating unit records his observations quickly and smoothly. Two-car collision, Highway 15. South 427. This woman used to spend hours taking stock of things, but the new IBM 224 sizes up an inventory in no time at all. This man used to trust countless details to memory, but the new IBM 224 never forgets anything. Small and compact, this new dictating unit fits a man whose job is bigger than his office, simply because you can use it anywhere you think. Anywhere. For more information, call your IBM representative. Now watch. This pass play runs out of the eye formation with a fake to the halfback off tackle. As you can see, they do a fine job of picking up. It's a tough play to run. Now watch a left tackle. They've got a dog on him. Still comes back and is able to pick up. This man is planning an upset. He scouts the other team's plays, pinpoints the weaknesses and errors, and records them on his new IBM dictating unit. Weak against strong side dog. This man is going to court, but not before he gets the information and data he needs to plead his case. Notice how easily he records his findings on a new IBM dictating unit. And why not? All he has to do is talk to it. Can I see your license, please? This man is investigating an accident, but he doesn't waste time scribbling notes in longhand. His observations are recorded quickly and smoothly on a new IBM dictating unit. What's trouble? 
This piece here, the radius is off. It's causing This man is checking production. With his new IBM dictating unit close at hand, he can record suggestions and ideas as they occur, instead of trusting them to memory. At only 28 ounces, this new IBM dictating unit is so small and so compact that you can use it anywhere you think. At home, on trips, in conferences, and of course behind your desk. Call your IBM representative. He'll be glad to show you how it works. This pass play runs out of the I formation. This man is working on a game plan. He scouts the other team's plays, pinpoints the weaknesses and errors, and records them on his new IBM 224 dictating unit. This man is going to court, but not before he uses the new IBM 224 to record the information and data he needs to plead his case. What's trouble? This, piece here. this man is checking production. With his new IBM 224, he can record suggestions and ideas as they occur, instead of trusting them to memory. At only 28 ounces, this new IBM dictating unit is so small and so compact that you can use it anywhere you think. At home, on trips, in conferences, and of course behind your desk. For more information about the new IBM 224, call your IBM representative. This is the best thing that's happened to typing since electricity. The IBM Selectric Typewriter. Instead of type bars, there's an ingenious printing element that dances across the paper at incredible speed. Faster even than the eye can see. Now watch in slow motion as it turns, tilts, and prints. This tiny printing element is also interchangeable. Simply remove one type style. Choose another from several distinctive typefaces. And click it into place. Takes only five seconds. And you're ready to start typing again. Someday all typewriters will work like the IBM Selectric. But why wait? This is where America's peace of mind begins. Around the clock, radar's electronic eyes watch the skies and report what they see to SAGE, defense system of the United States Air Force. Here is a SAGE center on 24-hour alert. At its heart is a computer developed by a research team from MIT and IBM working with the Air Force. The SAGE computer speeds the information for decisions by man in our missile age. Every scheduled flight across American frontiers is recorded ahead of time on IBM punch cards, then fed into the SAGE computer. Now the computer can draw a picture of what is supposed to be in the sky at any moment. It continually compares this expected picture with the real picture as seen by radar. If a flying object does not belong, it appears on this viewing screen. There's one now at the right of the screen. They call it a blip, unknown flying object. Friend or foe, within seconds the Air Force will know. The officer fires a light gun at the target blip. This tells the computer to track the object. At the launching site, a long-range Beaumont missile is readied for firing. Now they ask the computer to calculate an intercept point. X marks the spot where the Beaumont missile would meet the moving target if fired immediately. The officer in charge makes the final decision. Fire. At the moment of launching, the Beaumont missile receives instructions from the IBM computer. As the missile screams toward target, radar keeps on tracking. With electronic control, the computer automatically adjusts the missile to meet any change in the target flight. There is no escape. Intercept. This was a test, one of many successful tests of the SAGE Beaumont security team. 
our new system of air defense. To be ready for the worst, so that the worst will never happen, America is now armed with instant electronic reflexes. The Sage computer made by IBM is another example of the vast new powers that man can achieve through the creative use of his mind. Strength for national defense. Speed for informed decisions. Service for a growing America. This is IBM, freeing man's mind to shape the future. This man used to spend hours writing medical findings in longhand. But the new IBM 224 dictating unit cured him of writer's cramp. This man used to trust countless details to memory. But the new IBM 224 never forgets anything. This woman used to take notes while checking her merchandise. But the new IBM 224 takes stock of things quickly and easily. At only 28 ounces, this new IBM dictating unit is so small and so compact that you can use it anywhere you think. At home, on trips and conferences, and of course behind your desk. Whatever you do, the new IBM 224 can help you do it better. IBM electric typewriters outsell all other electrics combined, yet cost no more. With an IBM electric, you can type for an hour with less finger effort than you use in three minutes on a manual typewriter. For increased office efficiency and for the world's most beautiful letters, call your local IBM office tomorrow. There's a new America in the making. An America that has taught amazing new machines how to do man's bidding, to bring man's future closer. Every day another electronic computer created by IBM goes to work in industry, science, government or defense. IBM computers solve in minutes problems that once took weeks, months, even years. IBM's leadership in the surging computer field has created hundreds of new careers such as IBM Applied Science. The IBM Applied Science representative consults with executives shows them how IBM's electronic computers can solve their toughest problems. If you are a mathematician, physicist, or engineer, you can take part in making a new America. Call Dunkirk 5 5341 or write IBM Applied Science, 3625 West 6th Street, Los Angeles. When you were nine years old, your time was your own. And then you grew up. Now there's never enough time. You've got to make the most of the time you have. And you can with a new IBM 224 dictating unit. While you're using it to clear your desk of letters, memos, reports, or to put thoughts and ideas in order, your secretary handles other work for you. She's free to do a better job. And so are you. Small and compact, the new IBM 224 fits a man whose job is bigger than his office. Simply because you can use it anywhere you think. Anywhere. Whatever you do, the new IBM 224 can help you make the most of your time. So that more time is your only guess.